Let's begin our discussion of the slow etude for euphonium and tuba in year C with an obvious note, but one worth making. The slow etude for euphonium and tuba in this set is different than the one for trombone. Just make sure that you play in the right thing. Note also that there are a number of errors in this etude, at least in the original printed editions for baritone or euphonium and trumpet. These are listed on the Lions Band website. Make these corrections in your parts immediately so that you don't waste time and effort practicing the wrong things. You certainly don't want to get into the habit of playing it wrong and then have to do extra work to overcome the habit. Besides, once you get the corrections in there and you hear the differences, I think it'll be obvious that these really do need to be made. Now let's define our terms. Our tempo marking is adagio cantabile. It just means to play slowly and in a singing style. Then you have the word sostenuto, or sustained. Well, if the cantabile marking and the frequent slurs weren't enough for you, the composer or editor has also indicated that you need to play sustained. In other words, you've just got redundancy in here saying this thing needs to be smooth. Pumoso just means more motion. We'll go a little faster here, but just a bit. If they wanted a substantial increase in tempo, they would have given an entirely new tempo marking. Rallentando means becoming gradually slower, and then our tempo means to return to the previous tempo. So the aggregate effect of all these rallentando and our tempo markings is going to be to affect a bit of musicality at the ends and beginnings of phrases. Hopefully you would do that anyway, but with the markings there you have no excuse not to. Now speaking of tempo, the instructions indicate that this should be played with the dotted quarter note at 48 to 56 beats a minute. While this is quite slow, the feel should definitely be a two feel rather than a six feel. Now resist the urge to start too quickly. The 32nd notes toward the end should sound easy, not forced or strained. And you should go no faster than you can play them easily, as long as that's at least 48 beats a minute. In the audition room, briefly think through the 30-second note passages before beginning this etude in order to set your tempo. Now let's talk about the ornaments. The trills should start on the written note and then alternate between that note and the note a diatonic step above it. In other words, the next note up in the key. Rather than playing the trills with a constant rate of oscillation between pitches, ease into and out of the trill a little bit by starting a little slower, then speeding up some, and then slowing down as you exit the trill. The grace notes should be placed just before the notes that come afterward as a sort of anticipation. Make sure that you do not give any of these ornaments undue emphasis. If you were to compare a piece of music to, say, a cupcake, so the notes and rhythms would be your cake and maybe your dynamics and articulations would be the icing. Ornaments, like grace notes or trills, are more like sprinkles. They're just something that adds a little bit of interest, but no real substance to the whole. Don't bury your whole cupcake with just a giant can of sprinkles uh, by overemphasizing the ornaments. Now the cadenza. In the cadenza there at the end, in that chromatic scale, that long chromatic scale, don't try to simply play as fast as you can. Ease into that a bit, too. It'll be easier to execute and sound much more musically pleasing that way. It will even make the notes that you do play quickly sound faster than they are because of that contrast. Continue varying your pace throughout the cadenza. Don't let it become static. Eighth. Work on this etude at a variety of tempos. I like to practice most things at about half tempo, then at 75% of the tempo, then at tempo, then even at 125% of tempo, so faster than marked, and then at tempo again. I usually emphasize this kind of practice on faster etudes more than on slower ones, but here you have enough variety of rhythmic patterns, accidentals, articulations, and other markings that slow practice might be particularly beneficial. And then practicing faster than the written tempo, say in those 30-second note passages or other places where you just need to move kind of quickly, if you can do them even faster than you plan to, then the actual tempo will feel that much more comfortable. 
night. Plan and mark your breaths. I always recommend this because it helps to, to lend some consistency to your musical interpretation of the theme. It also helps to control for the effects of nervousness. You get in the room and your heart rate is up a little bit and you're going to tend to want to breathe shallow and often. But if you have the marked breaths and you have practiced breathing in the same places every time, you're going to find that that habit takes over and really helps you to deal with the, the possible effects of any nerves you might have, as well as, again, just making the whole thing more consistently musical. And finally, mark accidentals, odd fingerings, and really anything that's likely to cause difficulty for you in this. This etude is in a quote-unquote easy key in concert E-flat major, but there are lots of accidentals and other surprises that could cause problems for you. I recommend marking in advance anything that might trip you up. And mark everything that you miss when practicing, even if you miss it only one time. Making a mark in your music will help to ensure that you really do only make that mistake once. And in fact, that's a good policy to follow with every piece of music that, that you play, not just this etude.